Hold on. Deep? It's, yeah, it's How live. It's live. How to get your mind out of the gutter. Wait, you didn't start the yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Podcast number 50. This is a couple minutes before the actual show. We're just getting like set up. Down. Anchor. Here, you go set it up. For what I mean? Podcast app? Anchor.com. All right. What do you got to say for yourself on my pre-show? Um, about Is this it? This is Anchor.com. Go do it. I think that you should prepare before you start your pre-show. <laughs> yeah, but that's the whole point this of the pre-show. Like, isn't that the whole point of the it's pre-show? It's more like an S-show. Behind the, behind the scenes. Now you're Greatness is not just something. Why aren't you automatically logged into Anchor? Um. See, why don't you stop asking for? Be prepared, bro. Why don't you? I am prepared. The pre-show. I was born prepared. Michelle, do you have anything to talk about? Woo! What? Did you do that? Oh. You like that? Michelle, it's convenient how you're a little bit camera shy and you have to sit behind the table. Behind the table. Oh. Behind the table. Oh, question mark. Super. I wish I had some something to drink. Does the gas station sell beer? I don't know. Actually, they might. They don't sell beer. They don't like sell this one. Beer. No. They don't, right? That's what you like us come to. You try and get beer from a gas station. If you in Florida, you can Some get beer at every do. fucking gas station. We're not in Florida. We wish we were. This is <laughs> this is why it makes it makes sense to be friends with people because I could just text my friend Joey from the gas station. And what, he's gonna bring you beer? No, I'm gonna ask him if they sell beer. All right, you guys ready? We're going to talk about being learning based. All right, can you just check the thing? Can you can you scooch down? Let's see if wow. everybody fits. Can you, can you turn? Can you that? No, we're doing it now. Yeah, look, can you give me some air time? Give me the center of the universe. Why do you need air time? Just tilt it. Like, you should have did all that prior oh, to Just later. come over here. <laughs> I, like, I like me and white. I look pretty good. Self love. Right, is that what the podcast station. We need is some about? DNA stickers over here. DNA Realty Group. Hang on. Show them the shirt before you start. If you the want. Girls. Girls, girls. I'm going to put the website on right now where you could get that shirt. You have to text David for the free code if you want to order a shirt. We're not giving away free shirts. Why not? This costs money. You got to give it to if someone. If you bought a house. Or sold a house, or have done business with DNA Realty Group. I'll consider you get. You consider? I'll consider you getting the code. <laughs> this is high quality threads. You're out of control, bro. All right, you ready? Yep. Start. <laughs> yep. I'm choking. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back, and it's episode number 50. 50. Took a little bit of a pause. We took a hiatus. But then David kept saying, we gotta every do day somebody calls him or texts him and says, hey, you changed my life through your podcast this way, this episode. Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody who listens to this and who says the podcast is awesome. We are never leaving for too long, but we were busy closing deals. You know? Closing deals. Helping families is our number one priority. We can start off by focus, saying focus. So whatever it is that you're doing in your life, you always have one focus or one thing that makes, you know, the 80-20 principle. Yeah. 80% of your results come from 20% of your whatever, whatever it is that you do. So our 20% is selling real estate. And that's why we were on a hiatus because we were selling a lot of real estate. Yeah. So brother, can you introduce Michelle? Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome, there's something orange in this. <laughs> if you look on YouTube, you'll be able to see what's really going on behind the scenes. There is a girl wearing an orange shirt 
introduce yourself. It's bright and cheerful. Can you All tell right. me who you are? Can you tell us who I you are? I am Michelle. What do you do? <laughs> I sell real estate. What team are you on? Danny Realty Group. That's wow. right. Newest wow. member. I'm getting out of my comfort zone by being on their podcast. <laughs> That's right. Being on DNA Realty Group is really uncomfortable, right? On occasion. Because we make people step out of their comfort zone. You got to grow. You got to stretch. Step out of your comfort zone so you can grow. So in this week's episode, we're going to talk about growing. And, and one of the ways you do that is actually is by being learning based, right? And, right. and what does being learning based mean to you? You don't know what you don't know. Oh. And to get further, to change something in your life, you first have to, you got to learn something. Wow. What about you, Michelle? You can never stop learning. That's right. And, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. And one of the things we noticed that when we shadow or, or follow successful people, actually Gary Keller has a class about this. Most of the top people, and no matter what it is that they do, they're learning-based, meaning they're always seeking more information, more knowledge, more education in whatever it is that they're trying to get better at. And that's really what learning-based means to us. And that's one of the things that's helped us grow our business literally from zero. Remember 2009? I remember. That's not that long ago. So I 2009, remember. we got licensed and we literally did zero deals. And then the, we were actually just talking about this today. In the last, what was it been, two months? We did 10 transactions already. It took us like four or five years just to get to the level where we were doing 10 transactions a year. I know. It literally took us five years to do. It took us five years to do and we just did that in, in two a, months wow that's insane so how do you do that wow that's a good question that's what we're going to talk about today right now not tomorrow right now how do you do that you know what i think even teaching the dave ramsey class that i teach so you got to give us more context because most some people may not know what that is. It's a class about um, how to watch your spendings and pay attention to how you live your life and credit, saving on credit, and yep. just the way you spend. It's money management. Yeah. Seven steps to money management. So even teaching that class, yep. we took that four times. I think what people don't realize is this. It seems really long, right? Like you think about it, five years, we couldn't get 10 deals. Right, done. you're just looking up the statistics. You want to know what year we sold 12 houses? This is actually pretty funny. Yeah. Guess. 2017. Nope. Mm -hmm. Just guess. 2013? She's looking. 2012. Mm -hmm. 2012, we sold 12 houses, one a month. 2012? Yep. Wow. Holy guacamole. So finish your statement about the Dave Ramsey class. Yeah, what I realized is like in 2012, yep. we thought everything sucked. We didn't do anything. So then, especially for two people, it's basically sick. So then what most people don't realize is this. It's long and it's hard and it sucks. But if you keep doing it, one day you wake up. And what people always ask me personally in our office in business, they say, what did you guys do last year that your business blew up? What did you they do? They ask me that. They ask me that too. They go, what did you, what did you do yesterday that, that all of a sudden you're so successful? But what they should ask me that they don't ask me is what were you doing 10 years ago? What were you doing for the last 10 years? What were you doing five years ago? Because guess what? Mm. If you take a crop, what's a crop, Michelle? A crop? Yeah. Like, like a oh, grain? Yeah. Like a grain. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's good soil, right, that became good soil over years of a could that soil have started off as bad soil and then became good soil? Because they put different ingredients in it. And then they kept digging up the ground. And they kept pulling out the weeds. And they kept adding water. 
and then 10 years later, everybody comes to visit the garden and they say, wow, this garden produces good fruit. But 10 years ago, it was a shitty garden. How did it get there? Do you ever think about that, Michelle? Well, I'm not a farmer, but I think about similar things. What we're talking about <laughs> is the farming and the cultivating of your yes. life. Yes, things can grow. People no, no, no. ask, what did you do last year? But last year, the garden was already fruitful, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to ask me that. You want to ask me, what was I doing when my garden wasn't fruitful? What were you doing when your garden wasn't fruitful, Dave? I was crying, <laughs> wishing for a fruitful garden. So, you so if that. you're crying and you're wishing for a fruitful garden, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Because that means you want your garden to change. I'm actually reading um, Think and Grow Rich right now. And I was reading this morning and it was a chapter on persistence. And one of the biggest things is like, this is, the, this is I think, the challenge, right? People are like, what did you do last year to this year that your business has changed? Yep. Or they go out and they're like, all right, I listened to this podcast and these guys said, was saying, be learning based. We shadowed one mega age in a month and we, we learned to grow our business. So what happens is most people will go out and they'll try to shadow one mega agent a month and then it doesn't work that year and then they stop. And that's where I think persistent comes in because being learning based is really about doing it over a 10 period of time because most people stop mm -hmm. way before that point. Most people try for six months and then they quit. Well, don't you have friends, Arthur, where they actually, you call them one year doing this next year they're doing something else next year they're doing something else next year they're doing something else and not one of the years did they do something and it just blew up yeah mm -hmm. do you have people like that mm -hmm. you gotta stick to like a stamp you gotta stick to one thing until you get there put that mm -hmm. in your whole skin bro. wow but but that's the thing though i think the persistence comes one successful in business always tells us and this is one of the things we did wrong. We would, once we made a little money, we invested in, in real estate to get a return on our money. And then we would move our money. We could say, well, this thing doesn't work. Let's get it out of there. And yep. he told us the rule. You remember the rule he told us about investing into new business? 18 months. A minimum, he said, of 18 months. Meaning like if you try to spend your money on something, you have to be able to pay that bill for 18 months before you see a return in your investment. Yep enough of a return to know whether this is a good investment decision or not and this guy is a very very successful business person he has a, a bunch of real estate stuff a bunch of real estate companies and all that good stuff yeah but the thing about that is what i find the opposite is true most people try stuff for like 18 weeks and then if it doesn't work they stop right they they, they just they don't do it anymore and being learning based they're doing any one of these strategies that we talk about you really got to be able to do it for a very long period of time. In 18 months, maybe just enough time to figure out that this thing works. But now you got to go another 18 years. So I'm actually going to, you, you you'll think this is pretty cool. I'm actually going to tell you the statistics of, of our career. So we started real estate for those people who think they have it bad in 2009. David, how many houses did we sell? Uh, zero. Zero. <laughs> so so we, we were probably... We were learning based then because we were going to take studying scripts, taking all the classes, all that good stuff. Then 2010 was our first full year in real estate. How many houses did we sell? One. Can I just say something to yep. people out there in the world? People. People compare. They go, you guys are successful, which I don't think we're successful. Right? Me neither. I think we're way, we could be way more we successful. We could be way better. Our goals are way bigger than where we are today. Yeah. But a lot of people say, oh, my God, you guys are doing so great. But when I go back and I go, well, how's your first year? How's your second year? Everybody that I talk to has had a better first and second year than we had. In our I've career. never met a person that, that had, had it harder. Literally. So our second year in 2010, our first full year, if you want to say it. One house. It was a condo. For, it was, it was 115000 No, it's one fourteen nine nine. One fourteen nine nine nine. The commission wasn't a full commission because it was a referral from another lady yep. that we worked for. And what she promised that she would pay us ended up changing very quickly when the commission check came in and we ended up splitting 400 bucks between the two of us. Jeez. That was like a good memory. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I remember. It hurt my feelings. So 
in 2000, then the 2011, our second full, uh, well, second full year in real estate or third year, whatever you want to say. You remember how many houses we sold? Four. Five. We broke, and we broke a million in volume. That was huge. Yeah. And we just closed a million. We Now we close million dollar deals like and I nothing. Think about, That's so nuts. I want to say, was that about the time frame we left our other jobs and started doing real estate full no, time? No, it was around 11 to 18. It was in around what? 11 to 18 deals. Okay. So then 2012, we did about 12 deals, one a month, which is pretty good for most people. They think that's good. And then in 2013, we did 18 deals. So that's about the time we probably went to real estate full time. We When we went from 11 to 18 at, at that time, that's when we were full time. All right. So, so that's when we went full time to real estate. And then here's what happened after we went full-time real estate. That year, we went from 18 transactions and $6 million to 26 transactions and almost about the same, $6.1 million. So it wasn't a huge jump. A million to us. Just yeah, to be volume. Yeah, yeah. Volume. Like, it's still at the time was not sold. enough money because we were getting kicked yeah. out of where we were living. And if you want to figure out the money, you could do the math by multiplying it by roughly in real estate, the commission is 2.5%. Yeah, and then the next year we went to thirty-four deals, seven million almost. And in two thousand sixteen, that's at when that we, point we had a team. Now two thousand fifteen, we started building the team. We didn't grow by that much. And then two thousand sixteen, we did thirty. To, this year, our goal is twenty units, and we're I think we're on track because January, February, still that's right. We already did ten. And let me say this, Michelle, have you ever been to a Tony Robbins seminar? Have you ever been to a seminar where you learn something? Yes. T. Harbecker? Which one? Which one? Oh, no, no. It was a printer. All right. I think they're all good because you, there's uh, keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. So the whole time, even till today, what are we doing? What were we doing? So how many seminars did we go to? I mean, we went to you can't even think Tony off the Robbins, top of your head how many seminars um, we went to. Unleashed the Power so within a couple of times. We KW to seminars. Actor. Last week we were at family reunion in Dallas, still learning. But you know what? I have to say Books, there, there was this there was read. a period where we kind of slowed down. And in that period, our growth also slowed down significantly. And what I noticed when I would uh I, I noticed some people that are top producers, not just in our office. Which I'm like, hey, you go into this like seminar and be like, no, I don't, I don't do yep. that. I don't have time for that, and etc. And they already have huge businesses and they're great where they are. But what I find is that there's not a lot of people that are still growing from where they are to the next level. Yeah. So you can be happy and say, hey, I'm making a hundred grand, and say for you that's more money than you ever made. But if yep. you stop learning there, you're gonna stop there. We were just talking about that yesterday. If you stop growing. Tell us more about what you got. But then there's also the story. other no. the other side <laughs> of the thing is that you could spend more money to go into more private things with higher ranked individuals that are going to teach you different. Did stuff. you ever hear that thing about Brian Tracy? I think he told Darren Hardy or it was somebody he told that like you should spend if you want to succeed you should spend like ten percent of your income the first ten percent on, on personal development. And I don't know if it was Darren Hardy or it, maybe it was. Um, <clears throat> What was his name? Mike Ferry's son, Tom Ferry. It yeah. was one of them too. I and they said like they got to a point where they were making so much money. He was like, "How am I going to spend ten percent of like a million bucks on education?" Yeah. And they would like fly private jets to like private seminars where they would have to pay like twenty five grand a seminar just because that formula worked so well that they didn't want to break it. So in other words, he wanted to make a hundred grand. He spent ten on yeah. education, so he kept going, and every year he would make more and more and more money. Michelle, why is technology cool? Because it's always changing and it helps make things more efficient and connect with more people. Why is it cool for learning? Like what's so cool that you could do anytime right now? You don't have to go to a seminar. No. Oh, no, you can learn online anytime. You can learn online anytime. Yesterday, I sent I send you guys video. Dude, I send guy, you guys videos all the time. This guy on our team sends us like five videos a day. And the bad thing about my personality is like I'm a finished personality type of person. Whenever I start something, I have to finish it. And he literally sends me three hour videos that I have to watch. <laughs> I'm like well, going between appointments. I have to pull over. I'm like I didn't finish that three hour video he sent me. 
I he already sends finished us it. More, I did too. He sent us more I content that we can watch I in a reasonable watch time. <laughs> yeah, but remember one thing. I only send it after I watch it, buddy. And usually I only send you guys one thing out of the five things that I watch. So the beautiful thing about that, ladies and gentlemen, is you can learn any time. You yeah. can sit in front of your computer, pull up. And you can't, uh, the only, the only caution thing is don't learn from everybody. I don't know how you can tell in the beginning, but not everybody's making money that's on you. First, let's say. Or let's teaching, pro teaching proper shit. However, you can learn so much information and become so much better. Even in your car, instead of listening to music most of the time, listen to audio books right? You have Audible. Pay the 15 bucks. It's less than a meal in one day, except you're paying that for a month. Net time, no extra time. And then you can just learn all day, every day. There's so much free content. So books, YouTube videos, seminars, classes. I mean, there's, there's no shortage of ways you could learn at whatever it is you're trying to do. But to your point, let's go back and unravel about learning from everybody. The video you sent me was Gary Keller. who's He's got to be a billionaire. The guy started Keller Williams Realty. Yeah. And he was talking about not learning from everyone, but find one or two people, maybe max, that you really like what they teach in a specific area. And he gave an example of Warren Buffett. He's like, for investing, the only person I study is Warren Buffett. Because why would I study anybody else? He's the most successful, you know. His, yeah, his concept is learn from the best in the world. Which you may not know who that is or what that is, but whatever area that you're trying to learn is, whether it's health or personal fitness, like find somebody that's where you want to be and then learn from them and make that person your mentor. Make sure they have enough books, tapes, CDs. Because sometimes you can find somebody that's super successful, but they don't teach nothing. There's right. no podcast. There's no book. There's no seminar. And that's tough because they could be the best in the world, but you still won't know. They're not teaching you. Right. What do you think, Michelle? You got to talk to the microphone. Michelle, Michelle learns from David, so that's, that's her mentor. <laughs> <laughs> he teaches her. He teaches her every day. Every day. I yeah. learn from both of you. From both of us. There you go. And that's one of the things on our team. The culture has always been, been learning-based because we're, we're always going to seminars and classes. And what I found out, people that were on our team in the past, their biggest growth, and Michelle actually started the conversation with this, is like we make people uncomfortable because we make ourselves uncomfortable because we're always looking to learn and grow. And that's really how you go to the next level. Like if you're making 50, great. we'll use money because it's just such an easy metric to measure, right? Sometimes it's easier than emotion, for example. If you're making 50, you hang around with guys that make 100, you're going to make 100. And then you got to change that circle and you got to hang out with guys who make 250. And then you make 250. And it literally works just like that. But if you stop, wherever you stop, that's where you're going to really end up. And just go to the next level. You're not like we wanted to make millions for so many years, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But we weren't even close to the mindset that we needed. But we could have saw a hundred grand, right? And then when we got to hang around people that are making a hundred grand, all of a sudden, little by little, plus all the work that we did, we ended up making a hundred grand. It's belief. Then we went two fifty. Then we went over five hundred. It's like you you build your mind up little by little, just like if you went to a gym. You build and your, your body skills. Up. And your skills. And your beliefs. And your beliefs. I got like a good example. Like when we start in 2009, when you start in the beginning, you're super aggressive and you're like super motivated and you're young sometimes or young in the business. So, so you think like, like I remember we were like, we're going to make a million dollars this year. I remember that. Too. Here was the problem. We thought we were going to make a million dollars, but we were like, we're going to make a million. We're going to send million dollar houses. Yes, yeah, but we didn't believe it. And the other thing is we didn't have the skill set to do it. Because, like, you don't sell one house. You haven't made a dollar. Now you're trying to make a million. So you really have to start smaller. And that's really how you get bigger. Because if you're like, hey, I'm going to make $10 million. I'm going to do a $10 million deal. But you've never even done a deal. You may be setting yourself up for failure. Or if you're like, I'm going to make a hundred grand, But you never made even a $100. <laughs> and you don't believe on some level you can do it. Now, this is nothing to do with thinking big or small, right? Because we do believe that you can make a hundred million your first year in anything, but you have to believe it. 
beliefs take the longest time. You have to have the skill set to do it. Skills take time. And those things take time to develop. And then you also have to have the knowledge and the education and the expertise. Which like, takes time. Like the things we do today on a listing appointment. We could go in, meet a seller, call a seller, set an appointment, meet a seller, have the seller hire us, do a phenomenal job for that seller and sell their house and do it all within like an hour, right? Like do a great job, minutes, right? right? Sell their house, they, you know, give them all the resources. But we couldn't do that 10 years ago. We didn't have the team, the support, and all the all the info we do now to be able to do it at such a high level. So anything else about being learning-based, Michelle? Yeah. I mean, it's important. Like we said, it's important to always learn. So if you're not learning-based, you're not going to go very far. <laughs> you're not going to go very far. Damn. And if you want to go far, it's hard, you know. There's no easy... I think it, the, there's not a e really easy pass. And if there was an easy path, this is what I think it is. So most people try to do everything on their own and start from scratch. And I, and one thing everybody always asks us besides of like, what did you guys do from last year to this year to blow up your business? It is basically like, what would you do differently if you were to start all over in the beginning and get into real estate? And our answer, my answer to that question is always this. And I think my brothers are the same. If I was to start new in real estate, I would join a highly productive, highly efficient team. Because if you do, you get to learn on their time, you get to learn on their money, and you get to succeed much faster. Because every single person that we've seen that's been super successful, whether they are on a team or not, they started on a team and they learned fast. So like, that's good news for you. When you go off on your own, you're going to be like a <laughs> eagle. Flapping your wings. Get rid of me, so. Yeah, but she claims she's not leaving. Say it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Now. Say it till we. <laughs> oh, All right, in twenty years. All right, right. we're gonna replay this on a loop. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle. Now that you're doing ten times as much production as us, and you want to buy our team out, <laughs> she's like, "Hey guys, I'll give you a million bucks to buy DNA Realty Group," and we'll be like, "Remember when you said you weren't leaving?" And she'd be like, "No." And then we're gonna play the podcast. <laughs> So say it one more time. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Oh, That's man. right. All right. We, we hope so. But nevertheless, speaking on the point of leaving, I want to say that in life and in business, everything in a sense is like a stepping stone. Like what, where you are today, the opportunity or the relationships are helping you get to the next level in your business. And that's also being learning bases, getting into the relationships that are helping you grow. And you could also get into the relationships that don't help you grow. You guys want to talk about anything? My brother loves going deep, so we'll ask him this oh, question. Oh, are we going deep? Oh, you want to talk? About, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to Can mention? You feel the energy? Do you want to mention anything about negative relationships or the opposite of learning based, like being in the wrong situations and wrong relationships? And what do you do with that? Do you get out of it? Do you find replace it? Oh man! Do you even realize that you're in it? <laughs> How long is this podcast, buddy? You got time. Why did you do this? Why <laughs> you like to go it? deep, go deep, buddy. Jesus, buddy. Go deep. You, you have can cover to... it in five minutes. All right, I'll restart it if I need to. Jeez, pal. Oh my goodness. All right, what was the question, buddy? What about the opposite of learning based with negative relationships? Like if you're, you're like learning based. I got all these people and all this shit around me that's not positive. And I'm trying to overcome that. I can only speak for ourselves, right? Don't speak for me. Speak and for yourself, you. bro. But I'll, we'll just talk about me. But Arthur <laughs> has been with me my whole life. So I have not. I was not. In everybody this situation. can guess how that went. This is this. I was not. In this we situation. had a lot of friends that we grew up with that were not necessarily hanging around with that much these days. I have had even personal relationships, many, I'll say many, that didn't go well. But the thing about it is when your environment is not supportive or you don't take charge of it to make it supportive, whether that be leaving, which is like insane to do, keep going back. If you learn stuff, but then you don't take the hard road of getting yourself to the point where you take an action where you say enough is enough of whatever it is right relationships that aren't serving you guess what maybe you'll get there but it's, it's just going to take much longer it's just going to be much harder you know 
I actually remember vividly when one of my relationships ended that was really horrible. It was a good learning experience, but all of a sudden our business grew, right? Remember that? Because it wasn't just affecting me. It was affecting my brother, right? It affects everybody around you because when I walk in a room, how does it feel? How does it feel, Michelle? Horrible. I want Michelle to tell us. Depends on the mood you're in. Oh, yeah. That's the answer I'm looking for. Depends on the mood I'm in. If I walk in a room and I'm like super energetic, can you feel it? Mm -hmm. I need you to say it to the microphone. There's people that are driving and listening to this right now. You can feel it when I'm energetic? Mm -hmm. What about you? Oh, yeah. You're you're like a ball of energetic emotion. (laughs) What about when I'm not energetic? And I'm negative, and something's and I hide on my mind. My desk. Well, you just leave. <laughs> it looks like a storm came in the room, right? Hurricane, Horrible, Hurricane Dave, we call Hurricane it. Davida. Now, energy matters, and your energy is affected by the people you're around. Can you have mm-hmm. at high end, great energy all the time? Can you? You can, but it's difficult. Good, but Nobody yeah. really does. It's almost next to impossible. But you're Negative energy spurs can be shortened and tightened to be very slim and very small. And your positive energy bursts can be expanded to be the majority of your day and the majority of your life. Just think about that. Boom. Mic drop. (laughs) And I'm going to leave it off with this. This is all about learning based. Don't let your learning lead to learning let it lead to action so in other words if you go out and you're shadowing somebody or you're learning or you're watching a youtube channel if you do nothing with that information it's not going to go anywhere then you're a couch potato you got to apply it you got to reapply it over and over and over and over and over and over again be persistent little by little we got one minute left you know what time is it moleskin moleskin time all right michelle you go first old or new you got to be quick new New, oh, with the pick old a page. With the new, pick a page. Three, three. Ooh, Michelle's going to <laughs> page number three. <laughs> Dum, da, da, da. <laughs> Dream forever and act today. <laughs> you know who said it? I do not. I said it. Wow, you said that? Arthur, go ahead. Old or new? Old school. Old? Pick a page. Seven. Ah. How hard would you work if you knew you were going to be a millionaire? How many calls would you make? How many scripts would you study? How early would you get up? How hard would you work at work? Boom. As hard as they're working now, bro. Bye. <laughs> Michelle finished her first podcast. Wow, Michelle. This is so this is just for the YouTube show. <laughs> you wanna swear? You wanna say manja or something? No. What the hell is a manja? It's an Italian it swear word. It That's means not eat. A swear. Oh sounds like a swear. Manja, put some you manja wanna swear in your say ganja. eat. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle has been invited to the podcast for the past approximately <laughs> Ten four years. Years about seven. Has it been four or seven years? Yeah. She's very uncomfortable. Can if you, you tell? if you like this and you think this was helpful, just click like, subscribe, and share and tell people to go listen to Michelle. Because she's going to be starting her own podcast oh, show yes, soon. Right away. She's so excited. <laughs> so please share it. She can't hide it. She can't hide it. She's so excited. And she just can't <laughs> hide it. You All guys right. are awful. Anything else you want to say? The microphone's yours, Michelle. Michelle. For the YouTube. This is the podcast over. They're not getting rid of me. All right. <laughs> you keep saying that. It's going to happen. That. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You're going to we'll be see. in big trouble. We'll see. What does Gary Kelly say? We'll see about that. Yeah, I think he says we'll see. Michelle, what do you want to say to the people? There's somebody out there. I can feel it right now. We should have a, like a call line, like a hot, 
call. You guys could call in. They would sell a phone. Next time I'm gonna tell somebody to call while we're here with a problem and we'll solve it. You should send people positive affirmations like you do for me. No. Everybody you have an answer a positive. You're lucky, but you gotta understand line. every everybody doesn't deserve there is people have to pay for my time. You don't just get it for free. Um, Michelle, what do you got? What do you got that's positive that could help people have a great day? Don't give up. Wow. wow. Somebody that needed that to hear good? that. Don't give up. Tell Somebody us more needed to hear that. Tell me more? Yeah. <laughs> don't give yeah, up. Don't, don't give up. <laughs> Come on, Michelle. How, how can I tell you more when you're sitting here singing in front of me? <laughs> well, what do you mean? I'm I'm today, joyous I'm today. Right? The okay. storm has passed. It has? Yeah. Has it though? Yeah, it has. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting in the midst of a storm. <laughs> no. Michelle, come on. Tell people something. I don't think I'm talking to people right now. Positivity um, is key. All right. This is what we're going to do for the next two minutes before the show ends. Positivity is key. Key. Mm -hmm. key. See, do you know the acronym for key? Look. No, let me see it. Then I'll tell you. Do you know? <laughs> key. 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 No, everyone. YOLO. What about what? Okay. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got, Michelle? What do you got? Key. Keep enjoying. <laughs> Key. I don't know. Knowledge. This is actually pretty good <laughs> Empowerment. considering we were doing the podcast. YOLO. <laughs> you got no Y words other than YOLO, buddy. All right, Yesterday. Michelle, what do you got? Key. Come on. Hmm. Knowledge, empowerment. Are you Michelle? Yonder. I'm trying <laughs> to think of the Y word. <laughs> Just give us something. Just start. Um. What the Y word? Yellow, Yoda, <laughs> Ya, Yo, T. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Key. Just think about it. One of the words is <laughs> knowledge. But it would be like continue. What? Knowledge but continue? <laughs> keep. The first word is keep. That's like continue. Keep on going. Keep everyone. <laughs> keep. L l l Learning. Learn. What are we doing? Education. Okay, keep educating. Keep educating yourself. yourself. Oh <laughs> wow! Then we will end the YouTube show with that. <laughs> Key. Keep educating yourself. Wow, that was a beautiful ending. I don't know if I could have ended that shit any better than that. 